AT&T, rethink possible. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. First 10,000 fans through the gates get the exclusive limited edition Carlos Zambrano as a soccer player. Bobblehead doll. And you're watching the Cubs and the New York Mets on Comcast Sportsnet presented by Allstate. All of a sudden fall has arrived. Cool temperatures. Very comfortable in the sun but a lot of wind today Bob and uh, you noticed uh, it has changed quite a bit throughout the morning and into the early afternoon. Yeah, When I first got here to the ballpark today the wind was blowing out to left field uh, as batting practice pro progressed it was blowing straight out to center and now it appears to be blowing from left to right uh, whichever direction it goes today it figures to help the hitter so good day for Andy Wells to keep the ball down. Now let's get the Mets Southwest starting lineup written out by manager Jerry Manuel. It's been a tough go as we mentioned for this offense hitting 221 since the All Star break. Pagan leads it off. Lucas Duda rookie in left. Chris Carter is in right. David Wright's at third. Ike Davis putting together an excellent rookie campaign. Joaquin Arias at second base for Luis Castillo. Josh Tolley will do the catching. Ruben Tejada in for the injured Jose Reyes at short. And R.A. Dickey will hit ninth. Let's take a look at the Cubs defensively this afternoon. Soriano in left, Bird in center, Kosuke Fukudome over in right field. Ramirez in the red hot Starlin Castro on the left side of the infield. Blake DeWitt and Xavier Nady on the right side. Giovanni Soto behind the plate today for right hander Randy Wells. Mentioned his last time out against the Cincinnati Reds. As good as we've seen Randy in a while, had good command not only of his sinker, but also that hard slider, mixed in enough change ups to keep the Reds honest. Brian Gorman, the crew chief, will get the plate today. Graduated from the University of Delaware. Todd Titchener, Tony Randazzo, a Chicago native, and Paul Nart around the bases. It will be switch hitting Angel Pagan to start things for the Mets. Carlos Beltran was on the disabled list when we saw the Mets early this season. He is on their active roster, but not in the lineup today. Tough go for Beltran coming back from knee surgery. They have four switch hitters on the bench today. Fouled back by Angel. One ball, one strike. And to Angel's credit, he's taken full advantage of the increased playing time. He's had himself a real solid season. Batting average sitting at 294 coming into play today. He's club 10 homers, which is as many as he had in the last three years combined. And he's a base stealing threat with 32 on the year. And he's on base to start it. As he lines one into right. The Mets got to their team hotel around 2 a.m. this morning after a night game in Atlanta last night. They won that game avoiding the sweep, but they also lost Johan Santana to a, a pec muscle injury. That's a chest muscle uh, near his shoulder. So I'm not quite sure how long Santana will be out. He went five innings and got the win. Here's Lucas Duda. Low for ball one. These are not your dad's New York Mets. <laughs> I would imagine that program sales are at an all time high today because we didn't know who most of these guys were. Well, I think some of that is a byproduct as you said Len the night game in Atlanta last night they got in here very late and it's not uncommon for a team to start a lot of their bench players. Uh, in a day game after a tough travel night. The New York Mets have a new left fielder. Duda. Sorry. Outside two and nothing. And Duda looking for his first hit. You knew that was coming so just get it right out of the way. At some point yeah, we knew du it was coming. <laughs> Duda got called up a couple of days ago. And that's way outside three and oh. Chris Carter is on deck. 
another rookie. They have six rookies in their starting lineup. Well, Randy Wells, who's had some first inning problems this season, going to have to work out of a jam here. Eighteen first inning runs in 27 starts. Uh, the key numbers for Randy Wells, one and four. 18 first inning runs, 21 runs in the fourth inning. Other than that, he's been very effective this year, but two bad innings uh, over the course of the season have really skewed his numbers. It's Chris Carter. He's playing right, ball one. And this uh, Mets team looked a lot different when we saw them in April. And they took three out of four against the Cubs in that series at City Field. There's a strike, one and one. One one pitch. Popped into short right center and Fukudome with a better angle, especially considering the throw was going to go toward third. So he took it from Marlon Bird. Normally the center fielder gets it, but playing to the game condition. Absolutely. That's the absolute right thing to do right there. Uh, anytime the center fielder can get to the ball, uh, he's considered the captain of the outfield, but you have to consider the angle of the throw that you're going to need to make. And that time, Fukudome had the better angle. Marlon Bird gave way. David Wright homered last night in Atlanta. And the Mets 4 2 win. Deep drive, left field. Soriano's back on it, and he can't get it. Ball hit the wall pretty hard, and the Mets are going to get a couple on David Wright's two run double. Off the bat, it looked like a home run, but by the time it got to the wall, Soriano was there, and he just missed it. A hooking drive off the bat of David Wright hooking into the wind that's blowing from left to right really knocked that ball down Soriano got back to the wall just kind of fanned on it right there at the very end and when the ball ricocheted as far back toward the infield as it did that gave Duda an opportunity to come around and score from first. Mike Davis takes it low we have talked about. Soriano's improved play and left. The one thing he admitted a long time ago is uh, his strong suit is not up against that wall, particularly in this ballpark. I think we would both agree, Bob, going to his right, to his left, and in, he's been better this season. Not necessarily back. I believe that was a no pitch. Mike Davis was called up while the Cubs were in New York earlier this season. Boy, at that point, it looked like Jerry Manuel wasn't going to make it to the All Star break. A number of their players were on the disabled list. The Mets were floundering early in the season. They called up. Rookie Ike Davis to play first base in the series when the Cubs were back at City Field in New York, and they seemed to catch fire for a while. Yeah, he went six for 15 in that series against the Cubs. Good changeup from Wells to make it two and two. Davis, the son of former. Major League pitcher Ron Davis, who at one time pitched for the Cubs. That's jerked in the left base hit. Wright's going to be held at third by Chip Hale, the third base coach. From our 
Coors Light Robo Cam. You'll see David right out there at second base as Ike Davis just with a little one handed flip drops that ball out into right field in front of Fukudome. And then the word is around the league. If you're going to try to run on Kosuke Fukudome, it better be on a ball hit to his right or left. If he's coming straight in on the ball, he will unload a quick throw to home plate. So Chip Hale, the third base coach, threw up the stop sign immediately. Larry Rothschild out to chat with Wells is one of the newest Mets Joaquin Arias who was acquired from Texas on Tuesday in exchange for right fielder Jeff Rancourt. Those numbers combined between Texas and the Mets. He played 50 games for the Rangers. He's playing second base today and he Pops it up and this one will get out of play. Thanks to Mike Quaddy for joining us on our pregame coverage. Pretty interesting guy. We had a lot of long chats with Mike over the years about just about everything. We see on a daily basis he is a baseball gym rat. See if they can turn two. Ramirez to DeWitt, not in time to get two, and that'll get the Mets their third run. His right scores Arias with an RBI, and it's three to nothing. Looked like a double play off the bat. Top spin grounder to Ramirez playing in. A little mistiming there at second base with Blake DeWitt and Aramis Ramirez not quite on the same page. And Arias runs very well. Was able to leg it out for a fielder's choice RBI. A couple of good friends matching up here. And Randy Wells and Josh Tolley, who has caught some bullpens in the winter for Randy. From the uh, same area, not too far from St. Louis. Randy Wells from Belleville. Josh Tolley is from Breeze, Illinois. Low and outside, one and one. Josh Tolley plays a little Leonard Skinner when he comes to the plate at City Field. They call me the breeze. <laughs> I like it. I guess you could go with Summer Breeze, Seals and Cross, but that doesn't really get the blood flowing quite the same. No, way. it doesn't. And Metallica to cover that. <laughs> well, the Mets got four runs last night in Atlanta. That's not a number they've reached often. Since the All-Star break, they've scored three or fewer runs in 61% of their games. Well, they already have three in the first inning. Two and two on Tolly. Ruben Tejada. The shortstop is on deck. There goes the runner on the 2 2 pitch. Tolly strikes out, and that'll do it. So the Mets get three off Wells, and the Cubs are coming up. The only place that you can find Southwest Fairs on the internet is Southwest.com. We're not on Travelocity. The only place. What's the other one? We're not on Expedia. But I'm on Orbit. No! Southwest isn't on Orbit. The only place. Let me make this clear. The only place online to get Southwest Fairs. Southwest.com. Southwest.com. Uh, I know. We're only on one website. You want to fly all over. You don't want to browse all over. Brand new bag is on! Experience a Cubs game at historic Wrigley Field. Individual tickets are available for upcoming games. Get your tickets now by calling 1-800-THE-CUBS, visiting the Wrigley Field box office, or by logging on to Cubs.com. See you at beautiful Wrigley Field. Square dancing to the BLT. 
the Subway $5 footlong BLT will line dance across your taste buds. Crispy bacon, lettuce, and tomato form a hoedown of taste. And swing that partner around to one of our many sauces. Crank up the flavor at Subway. New inventory. New equipment. New trucks. New hires. New space. New markets. Achievement seizes new opportunity. Go to pnc.com slash business loans to see how we can help your cash flow situation. PNC, for the achiever in us all. Cubs trail 3-0 as they come up to bat for the first time. Now their Southwest starting lineup. 26 runs in the three-game series against the Pirates. Kosuke leads it off. Castro, Bird, Ramirez in the middle. Nadies at first, the former Met. Giovanni Soto back in there. He missed uh, those three games against the Pirates with a knee problem. Soriano in left. Blake DeWitt at second. And Randy Wells, the pitcher, bats ninth. Take a look at the Mets defensively. Lucas Duda in left field. Angel Pagan in center. Chris Carter over in right field. David Wright at third base. Ruben Tejada at shortstop. Joaquin Arias at second base. Ike Davis over at first. Josh Tolley doing the catching. Or the right handed knuckleballer R.A. Dickey. You see his numbers on the season. Yeah, because of the lack of stress and strain that the knuckleball puts on your arm, uh, Dickey most of the time works deep into the ball game. Assuming he's not knocked out really early today, he'll be uh, back on the leaderboard in the NL in earned run average right now at 2.57. Bob we know what a fastball looks like everything else from Dickey will be a knuckleball today in the past he used to throw a slider and a curveball but so far in the 2010 season all he has thrown is knuckleballs right around 84 percent of the time and fastballs the other 16 percent of the time no breaking balls this season. There's the knuckler and you notice the catcher totally his glove is bigger than a normal catcher's mitt. It's kind of a hybrid between a catcher's mitt and a first baseman's glove. Now, obviously, the size much larger than a regular catcher's mitt, much more flexible than a regular catcher's mitt, and even with the big glove, he's going to have trouble corralling some of these knuckleballs today. Swing and a miss, 72. Yet Fukudome was late because he waited back. What Dickey does is he envisions a small square basically at the top of the catcher's mask he just aims for that spot and nobody in the ballpark including the guy actually letting go of that ball has any idea where it's going to end up uh, because of the lack of rotation on the pitch those seams uh, depending on how the air hits the seams will cause it to go in any direction I mean occasionally it looks like the ball actually breaks upward as it gets into the hitting zone. Just depends on uh, how the wind currents hit the baseball. Most of the time, it's going to go down. Pagan hauls it in. Castro retired. When you think about every other pitch that a, a traditional pitcher throws, uh, it depends on the rotation on the ball to get moved. Whether it's a sinker, you try to get a little sideward tilt on the fastball. Whether it's a curveball, where you try to get the over-the-top spin. With a knuckleball, you try to get zero spin and let the ball move wherever it wants to go. By the way, happy birthday to our good friend Mike the Bender. 29 again. And again. Marlon Bird. Chopper to short. Ruben Tejada throws across in a quick nine pitch first inning for Dickey. And remember, he went to a full count on the leadoff man. Three nothing Mets. Wow, that guy's really staring over here. Must have sold him some carpeting or something. Mike, check out his bacon neck. Bacon. Sir, lean forward and show Michael Jordan your collar. Oh, see how it's all curled up like bacon in a pan? See how bad this dude looks? What's that? Thank you. Okay. Not us, though, buddy. Our lay flats. We're like twins. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah, we are. No, we're not. The lay flat collar. Lays flat, won't bacon. Only from Haynes. 
No one looks at trucks the way GMC engineers do. That's why this year is engineered with variable valve timing, active fuel management, and a six-speed hydromatic transmission. It's the only truck that delivers over 300 horsepower and best-in-class fuel economy. When you never compromise, you have nothing to hide. At the GMC Summer Event, get the best of the remaining 2010s and get 0% APR for 72 months, or choose 5,000 cash back on most Sierras. financial professionals help you reach your goals. Tomorrow is Kimberly Clark Day here at Wrigley Field. Don't miss the action as the Cubs host the Mets at 12.05. Lucky seat winners will be awarded great prizes throughout the game. There's no purchase necessary. For more info, visit Cubs.com. Also tomorrow, in support of the ongoing commitment from MLB, it's clubs and the players to increase opportunities for youth participation in baseball and softball. The Cubs are teaming up with the Baseball Tomorrow Fund to host an, an equipment drive. And they try to collect uh, used baseball equipment before the game tomorrow. So come on out. And we talked about that last week. Uh, you know you've got stuff out there in the garage that you're never going to use again. I know my son Michael coming up through Little League and the various leagues that you go through ultimately uh, you, know, you had to change bats every year you get a little bigger a little stronger you get a bigger aluminum bat and the other one just sits in the garage well bring it on out here somebody can get some good out of it. Ruben Tejada bounces out to his counterpart Scarlin Castro so proceeds will benefit Streeter Youth Baseball. And that's tomorrow before the game. Let me figure out. Okay. Specially marked tables on Clark Street between Addison and Waveland starting at 10 a.m. So if you have the used equipment, that's where you should go. R.A. Dickey takes ball one low. Also, the Cubs' wives will host their eighth annual food drive tomorrow. It'll be at gate D, Sheffield and Addison. Starting at 10 a.m., fans making a donation of 10 non-perishable food items or $20 will get a 5 by 7 autographed photo of a Cubs player. And that's limited to two photos per person while they last. Aren't a Dickey had been considered uh, something that not a lot of players want to be known as that's journeyman he's trying to uh, get rid of that tag this season and he's done a very nice job in that regard he signed a minor league contract two days before Christmas he got brought up from triple A in mid May and put together a fantastic career year as he strikes out we mentioned it earlier, Len. Uh, knuckleball pitchers are a rare breed, to say the least. There have been very few that have had any measure of success at the major league level. But if you have a knuckleball pitcher in your rotation, I think it makes the pitchers after him even better. I mean, a lot of veteran hitters don't like to face a knuckleball pitcher, not only because of that day's game, but the effect it has in the following game. You get used to seeing a 70 mile an hour pitch floating up there to home plate darting in all kinds of erratic directions and then go back out there the next day and face a guy throwing 95 with command and control and a lot of times a knuckleball pitcher can throw a player into a week long slump. Two and oh on Pagan who started the game with a single and would later score on the David Wright two run double.
And another hit. He's two for two. Well, that guy you were talking about is going to be 20 year old Henry Mejia, who in relief earlier this season was averaging 95 miles an hour on his fastball. At the start for the Mets. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was by design uh, by the Mets, the way they set up their rotation, or just the way the starts have fallen here at the end of the season. But that's a good point of, of how you put your starting rotation together. How do the pitchers contrast against the, each other's styles? You don't like to get two guys back to back in the rotation that are very similar in their stuff and their velocity. So once again, uh, inserting that knuckleballer into the middle of your starting rotation. Uh, in my estimation tends to make the guys around him better. Pitch to Duda. A roller for DeWitt. Nice backhand and the flip from his glove to Starlin Castro to get the speedy Pagan at second base. Nicely done. To end the inning. Midway in the second three nothing Mets. summer it's here but not forever the Lexus Golden Opportunity sales event don't wait to enjoy legendary Lexus quality at equally legendary prices lease the 2010 IS 250 all-wheel drive for $349 a month for 36 months with $3489 due at signing see your Lexus dealer Save big money on appliances at Menards. Get a 25% rebate off all stock major appliances. This super capacity frigid air washer is $449.25 after rebate. The matching large capacity dryer is only $374.25 after rebate. For lighting solutions, trust Hunter Lights. The contemporary looking Cirrus collection has a brushed steel finish and most can be mounted up or down. An island light is $77, a five light chandelier, $89. Save big money at Menards. I'm the puppy that ate your back seat. I'm a random windstorm. I'm a hot babe out jogging. Call me Mayhem. I'm every reason to have the right insurance. But a lot of you are cutting your coverage and leaving yourselves unprotected. So get Allstate. You can save money and be better protected from Mayhem like me. Mayhem is everywhere. Protect yourself. Are you in good hands? Tonight at 5.30, don't miss Chicago Tribune Live on Comcast Sportsnet. Tribune writers, sports stars, and celebrities join host Dave Kaplan to discuss the day's hottest sports topics. Don't miss Chicago Tribune Live, presented by Harris Bank, tonight at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. The Mets fan doesn't look too happy. His team leading 3 to nothing. Ramos Ramirez will start the Cubs second against R.A. Dickey that knuckler broke inside. Talking about righties versus lefties. When you face a knuckleballer the Cubs don't have any switch hitters in their lineup today. If they did those guys would probably bat right handed. Now, Luis Castillo normally hits right handed against a knuckleballer. On the Mets team, even though he is not in their lineup today, of course, was not facing his own pitcher. Ramirez grounds out to David Wright. Maybe in spring training next year when it's inter squad games. We'll see it today. Well, the knuckleball, the screwball, two pitches that have become pretty rare in baseball, but something different. Dickey was mentored by Charlie Huff while in the Texas organization. That's a strike on Xavier Nady. I would say most knuckleballers today were mentored by one of the Negroes, Charlie Huff, or as we move along, Tim Wakefield. Maybe a little Tom Candiotti. Now there's a pretty small pool of uh, experience to lean on if you're a young knuckleball pitcher but uh, I had the fortune or misfortune however you look at it facing both the Negro brothers during the course of my career. 
And as I said before, veteran hitters didn't like to face the knuckleballers uh, because it would throw them into a slump. So I always got the Necro Brothers. Swing and a miss. Nady fans. Five up, five down for Dickey. Sunday is Chicago Blackhawks Day here at Wrigley Field. The 2010 Stanley Cup champions are looking forward to the 2010-2011 season and will be giving away pocket schedules and training camp festival brochures before the game and autographed items in between innings. Don't miss the action. The Cubs and the Mets at 120. For more info and to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Morris winner Duncan Keith will conduct the stretch. Soto basically four days off because of a uh, minor knee problem did not participate in the Pirates series. Cubs officially called up Wellington Castillo for the second time this season so they have two backup catchers. Pagan who makes the grab and Dickey has cruised through the first two in his Wrigley Field debut three nothing New York Nissan's bottom line sales event is ending so we're laying it all on the line with up to $1,000 bonus cash on top of all existing offers. Nissan's bottom line sales event. Get 0% financing on most new Nissans, plus up to $1,000 bonus cash. Hurry, event ends September 6th. Visit choosenissan.com or see your local Nissan dealer today. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. New inventory. New equipment. New trucks. New hires. New space. New markets. Achievement seizes new opportunity. Go to pnc.com slash business loans to see how we can help your cash flow situation. PNC, for the achiever in us all. Bold, even stunning. It's gorgeous, inside and the out. Consumers Digest Best Buy. Understated Delta. Sedan elements. of the Year. It feels alive. Creating quite a stir. It turns heads. World class. It, it continues to create a lot of buzz in the press. But don't worry. You won't hear any of it when you're sitting in here. The quiet-tuned Buick LaCrosse. It's the Buick Summer Event. Get the best of the remaining 2010s and lease this LaCrosse CX for $329 per month. Visit BuickDrive.com. The 26th Annual Cubs Convention will take place at the Hilton Chicago January 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2011. Rooms are available now by calling the Hilton Chicago at 312-922-4400 and asking for the Cubs convention rate. Weekend passes will go on sale in early November. For more information, visit Cubs.com. Chris Carter pops up on the first pitch. Blake DeWitt. One away. Of news at the uh, minor league level for the Cubs. I want to send out congratulations to Iowa Cubs manager Ryan Sandberg, the Pacific Coast League Manager of the Year. That was announced about two hours before game time today. 
The I Cubs are in a battle for a playoff spot here over the final weekend against Memphis. Tennessee Smokies manager Bill Dancy has been named the Double A Southern League Manager of the Year. Second time he's won a Manager of the Year award. Smokies with 83 wins. And among the uh, Cubs minor league all stars, Michael Brenly, a Florida State League all star. Congratulations, that? Pops. Well, thank you very That's much. That's great. Yeah, we're excited about that. Daytona basically in a must win spot. They're two back with three to play. Yeah. Unfortunately, Peoria was eliminated from wild card contention in the Midwest League yesterday. It's been a really good year in the Cubs farm system. Swing and a miss. David Wright strikes out. For the 140th time this season. All right, as we mentioned earlier in the season when the Cubs saw the Mets back in April was really struggling striking out about three out of every four at bats still strikes out at an alarming rate uh, for as good a hitter as he is. Davis one for one ball one outside. Also some staff members from the minor league system. Are with the club for the next few weeks. Mark Riggins, the pitching coordinator. Dave Keller, the hitting coordinator. Good to see Franklin Font, the Cubs infield coordinator, and Chuck Boffman, the uh, rehab coordinator. Chuck's been with the team just about every September for quite a while. Good to see Chuck Boffman as well. Two and one. Very rare on a Friday to have more than one matinee. Cubs always play their home games on Fridays at 120, but the Yankees hosting the Blue Jays today, and it's 5-3 New York in the sixth. Of a do or die series starting tonight in St. Louis for the Cardinals as they play the first place Reds eight games out in the central two out walk to Davis. Well, then very quickly some of the other minor league all stars this season Darwin Barney who's here with the big club now and Brad Snyder both named to the Pacific Coast League all star team. Robinson Chirinos a catcher Tony Campana and Brandon Guy are a couple of outfielders named to the Southern League postseason all star team. Besides that Brenly kid Rebel Riddling and DJ LeMayhew in the Florida State League named to the all star team and also in the Boise Hawks Alvaro Ramirez and Pierre LePage named to the Northwest League all star team LePage was the only unanimous selection on the entire all star team so congratulations to all those youngsters and uh, Brandon Geyer. Hitting 335 leads all active Southern League players in hitting. Heard a lot of good things about him. Oh, yeah, fouls it off. Tony Campana, 44 stolen bases, 150 hits, leading the team, was also named the best hustler in the league. He doesn't play pool, it's just how hard he plays on the field. Uh, I, right? think, I think he shoots a little pool too but yeah you're right for the way he plays on the field Ramirez is going to charge and he barely gets Arias to end the inning two out walk no runs we'll go to the home third Cubs still looking for their first base runner trailing three nothing. 
The only place that you can find Southwest fares on the internet is southwest.com. We're not on Travelocity. The only place. What's the other one? We're not on Expedia. But I'm on Orbit. No! Southwest isn't on Orbit. The only place. Let me make this clear. The only place online to get Southwest fares. Southwest.com. Southwest.com. I know. We're only on one website. You want to fly all over. You don't want to browse all over. It's me, the lime. Welcome to the Taco Bell Cantina Taco. Marinated steak, cilantro, and me, your host to a new taco experience. And that deserves respect. The whole new taco awaits from Taco Bell. For a limited time, get free flooring installation for your entire home. Plus, get free financing, free pad upgrade, free flooring removal, and free measuring. With Luna, there's more to love for less. 773-202. Luna. Dudes, this is the best. With the Coors Light Home Draft, we can drink a draft at home while we watch the game at home. <laughs> what could be better? Better. We're here. Coors Light Home Draft. CO2 pressurized for up to 30 days of fresh frost brewed draft beer right from your fridge. It's all right. It's cool. The Home Draft from Coors Light. This weekend, Manny Ramirez faces his former team in a battle of the Sox. Tune in as the Southside's newest slugger returns to Fenway in black and white. White Sox, Red Sox, tomorrow at 5.30 and Sunday at noon on Comcast Sportsnet. Tickets are available now for Cubs games in September. In particular, the series against the Houston Astros this Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Bleacher seats are still available as well. To purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com, call 1-800-THE-CUBS, or visit the Wrigley Field box office. We welcome those viewers watching on ESPN UK. Here today, the Cubs hosting the Mets. You're going to see that a few times. Ball popping out of the middle of the catcher. Who's just kind of guessing at where it's going to land. Fastball at 84 with a little tailing movement. That's his uh, secondary pitch. Right back to the mound. I think it would be relatively easy to call a game for a knuckleballer. You just put down the sign for knuckleball. If he says no, it's a fastball. That's yep. it. Yeah, and it is tough for a catcher, obviously, catching a knuckleball pitcher. Uh, you don't try to frame borderline pitches with a knuckleball pitcher. You just try to get the glove in front of the ball and keep it from going to the backstop. If you happen to catch it, that's a good deal. But when you're catching a traditional pitcher and there's a borderline pitch you always try to get outside the ball and make sure you're moving back toward the zone. When you're catching a knuckleballer you just try to get leather on. It. Comes a 1 0 to DeWitt. Boy bottom fell out of that. Now Bob because a pitch is so slow this knuckleball. Watch how totally catches it. Yeah. Really fighting it. Yeah. First a 1 1. Outside. Well, the slower pitch, your tendency behind the plate is to come out and grab it, but you got to kind of let it get all the way in there, right? With all that movement, you don't want to cause catcher's interference either. That's the theory I've heard most often. For I've never had the opportunity to catch a knuckleball pitcher, but guys who have done it throughout their career say you try to wait until the last instant before you commit to going after the pitch. It was a fastball. And DeWitt able to turn on it. I guess if you're going to guess fastball, it would be in that spot. Ahead three and one on the count. Fastball. Blake DeWitt probably went, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Down around the knees, right where he likes it, hooked it through that hole in the right side. I'm not surprised he gave in and threw a fastball in that situation with the pitcher in the on deck circle. But Blake DeWitt is glad he did. There's the bunt by Wells, and Davis will underhand for the second baseman Arias for the out. That's number nine in terms of sack bunts for Randy Wells. 
Now it really gets interesting catching a knuckleball pitcher when you get a runner at third base in a close ball game. I mean, it's uh, it's tough to block balls and keep them in front when you know what's coming and what the movement on the pitch is going to be. But when you have no idea and your pitcher has no idea and you're supposed to keep the ball from going to the backstop, that's when catchers really start to break a sweat back there. Keep an eye on Tolley with a runner at second, and the signs for well, the first time around, he just moved his fingers very quickly. He really didn't give many signs at all. Again, for the most part, Dickey knows what he's going to throw as Spukadome pops out to Arias in shallow right. Cubs get their first hit, but they strand DeWitt in scoring position. 3 nothing Mets after three. After doing my research, I've decided to get a new Toyota, but I want a great deal. How can I tell when it's the right time to buy? Oh, not now, honey. Mommy's talking. It's Toyota's Now's the Time sales event, and your time for waiting is over. Because right now, you can lease a 2011 Camry for only $179 a month. Plus, $750 cash back, enough to cover your payments through the end of the year. Now's the time, but you need to hurry. Offers end September 7th. Plan your next corporate or social function in one of Wrigley Field's private party accommodations. Wrigley Field offers a variety of private, catered opportunities to host and impress your group. The Mezzanine Suites, presented by Nuveen Investments, has four convenient rental plans to fit all budgets and needs. For larger parties of 75 to 100, the Bud Light Batter's Eye, located in center field, provides a unique view of the game. All private party accommodations provide generous food and beverage packages, as well as VIP parking. Call 773-404-CUBS or visit Cubs.com. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Hey, you want a ride? It's okay. <laughs> sorry. We're sorry. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> 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 Jack Link's Jerky. Feed your wild side. Tomorrow, Comcast Sportsnet is your college football kickoff headquarters. At 11.30, Illinois Mizzou square off with bragging rights on the line. And at 6.30 on CSM Plus, Northwestern takes on Vanderbilt. It's a Big Ten doubleheader beginning tomorrow at 11.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. This fourth inning is brought to you by Fourth Meal from Taco Bell. Open 1 a.m. or later. The Menards grounds crew. Manicuring the infield dirt in between innings. Nice and smooth as Josh Tolley takes ball one. We're in the fourth. The Mets got three in the first inning. Nothing since. Wells with a 1 0. That's smack foul back out of play. In the middle of a 10 day, nine game homestand, the Houston Astros come in Monday before the Cubs will hit the road next weekend in Milwaukee. A much improved Houston Astros team. They've won their last three in a row, eight of their last 10, in a tie for third place in the Central Division with the Milwaukee Brewers going into play today. It sweeps over the Phillies and the Cardinals recently. And really, Bob, it all started after two franchise icons were traded Lance Berkman and arguably the best pitcher in franchise history, Roy Oswald. Their starting pitching has been really good lately. Only shortening up with two strikes. And it's now full three and two. Well, look at the batting stance, choking up on the bat, crowding the plate, and he takes ball four. This will be a fun one. 
AT&T trivia time. Believe it or not, the Mets have never had a no hitter, but there are six former Mets who have tossed at least one no hitter after leaving New York. I think we can name all six. Ruben Tejada not in the bunting spot with a pitcher on deck. Well, Nolan Ryan would be the first one. Yeah. Did Frank Viola throw a no hitter? We will find out. We'll find uh, out, I guess. It's a good guess, though. Well, they've had a lot of one hitters in their career. How about Tom Seaver? David Cohn. David Cohn pitched a perfect game for the Yankees. That's good. Ground ball base hit. And that'll put the pitcher in a bunting spot. Two on, nobody out. This is where that leadoff walk comes back to bite Randy Wells. Well, never a good idea to walk the leadoff hitter in an inning, but uh, especially when you're down at the bottom of the order, those are guys that uh, you'd like to think that uh, if you force them to put the ball in play, your defense can get some outs behind you, and it just sets up the opportunity here as Chip Hale talks it over with R.A. Dickey uh, for your pitcher to go up there, put down a sacrifice bunt, move two guys into scoring position in this situation. Chopper on the bunt, and 80 throws to third, and it's in time to get Tolly. A nice aggressive defensive play by Xavier Nady, charging in from his first base position. Still first and second, one out. Pagan, two for two. And he flies to left. Soriano coming in. And it's up to Lucas Duda. USC product, seventh rounder back in 07 by the Mets. Wednesday made his major league debut in Atlanta 0 for 2 with a walk before leaving leaving with leg cramps in the late innings. He's got some power. 17 home runs at Triple A in only 70 games. Ground ball to Ramirez. That'll take him right to the bag as they force Tejada to end the inning. They got the first two on, but then Wells quickly got out of it. When Ken's brakes started squeaking on the Edens, and Pam's check engine light came on near Michigan Avenue, and before Tom headed out to the lake house, they all came here. Minus total car care, total customer care. That's the Midas touch. Mr. Opportunity, you doing the Honda thing again? Yeah, clearance time, you know, your chance to save on the reliable Honda Accord. That's all I've got to say. Wow, you really are Mr. Opportunity. The 2010 Honda Clearance. It's the only thing from Honda that won't last. <laughs> Lease a Honda Accord for zero down payment and zero do it signing.
inventory. New equipment. New trucks. New hires. New space. New markets. Achievement seizes new opportunity. Go to pnc.com slash business loans to see how we can help your cash flow situation. PNC, for the achiever in us all. Time to answer our AT&T trivia question. There are six former Mets who have tossed at least one no-hitter after leaving New York. Well, we got about halfway there. I mentioned Ryan, Seaver, and Cohn. And the other three, Mike Scott, Dwight Gooden, and Hideo Nomo. Should have remembered Mike Scott. That was against the Giants team that I was playing for back in 1986 to clinch a playoff spot for the Houston Astros. David Cohn with a perfect game for the Yankees. It's a strike from Dickey to Castro. Came into the game third in the league in batting average. 317, also third in the league with a 355 home average. I'm going to send out happy 17th birthday wishes to big Cub fan Casey Toomey. And that's blooped and almost caught. Good effort by Arias, but it ends up a base hit for Castro. That's a leadoff single on an 0-2 pitch. The guy is just a machine. When he hits it hard, he gets base hits. When he hits it soft, he gets base hits. Very defensive swing on the two-strike count. Just pokes it out there. Fast to Arias for a base hit. Also, happy 50th birthday wishes. This actually isn't until tomorrow, but we're going to say happy birthday today to Kim Rooley, big time Cubs fan. Marlon getting a couple of days off. Did not play Wednesday. Appeared to be a, a leg injury, but. He didn't really want to talk about it. So he had Wednesday off yesterday, the off day, and he's back in there today. Marlon very similar to Derek Lee in that regard. Injuries are never an excuse. You just you go out and you play. One and two on Bird. Cool, windy, but sunny day here at the ballpark. That one lofted out into shallow right center. The Cubs have not hit a ball hard in this inning, and they have two on with nobody out. Well, offensively, you're not quite as picky against a knuckleball pitcher as you would be against a more traditional pitcher. You'll take your hits however you can get them. That knuckleball moving abruptly away from Marlon Bird. He cued it right off the end of the bat. Starlin Castro peeking over his right shoulder there, realized he didn't have a chance to advance all the way to third. Cubs have it cooking here with nobody out. For Ramirez. Oh, 
who's 0 for 17 against the Mets this season, going to be 0 for 18 as Pagan will make the play. Here's Nady who struck out his first time. Another amazing thing about the knuckleball and R.A. Dickey and 133 in the third innings coming into play today. He'd only walk 33 batters for a pitch that is so erratic. I, I think the main reason for that is hitters aren't patient enough. Nady with a base hit. Castro coming toward the plate. The throw is going to be cut off. It's three to one. Nady aggressive in that spot. Comes with three singles in the inning and they're on the board. Anytime you see that knuckleball up above the belt, that's one you want to swing at. What an absolutely horrible throw back into the infield. That ball bounced out near the second base position, got to the cutoff man on two hops, allowing Starlin Castro to round third and put the Cubs on the board. Mentioned earlier, there's as many theories about how to hit a knuckleball as there are about how to catch one. But generally, if you see it up, that's a pitch you want to hack at. If you see the knuckleball down below the belt, it's probably going to end up either at the bottom of the strike zone or in the dirt. So, not unusual to see guys hacking at high knuckleballs. See it high, let it fly. See it low, let it go. Dave Jowis in the Chicago area, son of longtime sports writer Bill Jowis. Carter coming over and making the grab. Bird went back to second, tagged, and is now at third with two outs. Not to continue to belabor the point, but that becomes significant when you have a knuckleball pitcher on the mound. Very erratic pitch, tough to throw, tough to catch. Anytime you can tag up and get yourself to third base, regardless of how many outs in the inning, it enhances your chances of possibly scoring a run on a pass ball wild pitch. Bob Euchre has a great line about when he caught knuckleballers, quote, I met a lot of important people because they all sit behind home plate. <laughs> and Jim Bouton once describing what it's like to throw one as Soriano. Towering fly deep to left. Gone! That's a three run homer, and the Cubs lead four to three. His 22nd of the season. Right in the middle of the plate, just above the knees for Soriano, and that wind is really whipping from left to right right now, but didn't affect that majestic drive in the least. A go ahead three run blast. Four runs in this inning. DeWitt pops it up on the right side, and it'll be caught by Arias. Soriano playing a little big fly as he found the bleachers and left. Look at a standing O as he heads back to his defensive position after giving the Cubs the lead.
Hobo. You can look at it backwards, forwards, upside down, or even spin it around. It still spells one thing, bargains. Hobo is packed with bargains. Flooring, kitchen and bath, everyday and seasonal products. You never know what you will find at Hobo, but you will always find it for less. Those other guys have high prices, but Hobo won't have it. It's true. You never know what you will find at Hobo, but you will always find it for less. Go with the brand that gets results with strong roots and strong stocks for performance you can take to the bin. Go with industry-leading DeKalb Genetics and proven Genuity Trait Technology, letting you get more from every acre. Go all season strong. Go with DeKalb. It's a Subway fifth inning text footlong to 53695. If you are the 500th texter, you could win. Five five dollar foot long subs from Subway. Cubs leading four three as we get into the fifth. Chris Carter taking ball one. Andy Wells needs a shutdown inning. After his team scored four times. That's got Carter from the Boston organization. Last October, originally drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks out of Stanford in 2004. You think they're all together? I guess they are. All together. Carter was a player to be named in a Billy Wagner deal. And Wagner went to the Red Sox last August. He's been traded three times already in his career. And after a while, you'd probably start saying, Is it something I said? <laughs> There's two different ways to look at it. You've been traded three times. There's been at least two organizations that felt they didn't have a spot for you, or there have been two teams that really wanted you. Yep. Three two pitch just missed ball four and a dreaded leadoff walk for the second straight inning. Hey fans, text Banner to Beehawks. That's 242957 to join Blackhawks Mobile and be entered to win two tickets to the Blackhawks 2010 home opener on October 9th. That's Banner to 242957 for your chance to catch this historic moment as the team raises the Stanley Cup banner to the rafters. David Wright with a two run double. In the first inning, he struck out in the third. A couple of pitching notes Tom Gorzolani has a small, incomplete hairline fracture under the fingernail of his left pinky. That doesn't seem to be the biggest issue. It's the swelling in his left hand. Remember, he took that line drive off the hand, uh, off the bat of Jose Tabata the other day. So Gorzolani will miss his next start. Casey Coleman is available in the bullpen today. And his next start was supposed to be tomorrow, but he'll be moved back to either Monday or Tuesday against Houston. Carlos Silva likely back in the rotation one of those two days. And coming up tomorrow, Carlos Zambrano on normal rest, Ryan Dempster on Sunday, and then it looks like Silva and Coleman to start the Astros series. Silva will be coming off the disabled list. And hopefully Gorzolani only has to miss that one start. 
consensus was from the dugout they thought it hit him in the head so they were actually pretty happy that it, it only got him in the hand. It could have been a lot worse. Wright bounces diving stop by Ramirez he has one play that's first but David Wright pretty good wheels and he beat it out. You think of Wright as a slugging third baseman and and he is but he also has 18 stolen bases so he's not your typical third baseman in that regard. I'm not sure if we have a shot out of it or not but if you also watch the very tail end of this play David Wright hits the very front edge of first base with his toe. Get there as quickly as possible. He does have great running speed busting it out of that right handed batter's box and came right down on the very front edge of the bag with his toe. That's as quick as you can get to that bag at first. This is the third time in the first five innings the Mets have had two on with nobody out. They got three runs in the first inning. Wells was able to get out of it in the fourth. It certainly didn't hurt. But the inning started at the bottom of the order and it's one and oh on Ike Davis has reached twice already. Two balls no strikes as the wind continues to howl out right now straight out to center and maybe a little bit toward right center but it is gusting. Keep the ball down today. The Ivy is moving like that you know it's pretty windy. Yeah. Up in the air to left Soriano backpedaling. Runners will hold one away. This patchwork lineup that the Mets are running out there today and uh, we talked about it at the top of the show Angel Pagan David Wright two guys you definitely have to watch out for Ike Davis another guy who has home run power but other than that uh, Duda had some home runs in the minor leagues but uh, a bunch of contact hitters the guys that are not known for their power just avoid those three guys that can leave the ballpark. with one out two on Cubs in double play depth around the infield ball one and a slider the Mets were in pretty good shape going into the all star break they were forty eight and forty second place in the east four back of Atlanta just one out in the wild card but they've gone eighteen and twenty eight since that's foul. about this Bob Tuesday ended a stretch for the Mets of 27 games during which they were either 500 or one game on either side of it one over or one under the third longest such streak ever. And they were avoiding all kinds of streaks winning streaks and losing streaks right now they're two under. Well, as a team that's when you feel like you're just spinning your wheels you're not making up any ground you're not losing any ground. If you've built yourself up a big lead in your division and go through a stretch like that, then you say, oh, that's fine. It's another day off the calendar. We're right where we were yesterday. We'll take it. Castro will get one at second base. That's it. So they'll be at the corners with two gone. Four 
Coors Light RoboCam. Ball leading Castro a little bit toward the hole. Only the one play to get the force at second base. Oh, two outs here. Randy Wells with an opportunity to avoid damage after a leadoff walk. Swing and a miss by Tolley. Remember his last at bat. By the end of the at bat, with two strikes on him, he was really choking up. Something you just don't see very often anymore. He chokes up a little bit to start the at bat, just gets up off the knob of the bat. The deeper he gets in the count, the higher up that handle he goes. Side. Drives that ball onto the left center. It's going to hold up for Bird. So back to back innings. Randy Wells working out of a major jam. As the Cubs maintain their 4-3 lead. Over a thousand people a day switch to Chevrolet. Let's find out why. Smile this sharp. Has great mileage and offers OnStar. The 100,000 mile powertrain warranty got my attention. It's the Chevrolet summer event. Which means the only thing left to decide is who drives it home. Me. Her. Me. Qualified lessees now get a low mileage lease on this Malibu LS, a Consumer's Digest Best Buy for around $199 a month. Call for details. The switch begins at ChevyDealer.com. Back to school, it's forward to what's next. With a BlackBerry Curve, Samsung Reality, or LG Cosmos for under $20 after rebate. Rule the air. Verizon. What's the name of your company again? Mike's Construction. Mike is getting schooled in internet search by his daughter's boyfriend, Jimmy. You're nowhere on the internet. I, I can't even find you. What? Fred is working with his Dex1 marketing consultant. She helped him improve his online presence and attract new customers. Fred is building on success. Mike? I should be on the internet somewhere. He's still getting up to speed. Nope. Your business can get all this by calling this. one 877 4 now Hi, everyone. Gail Fisher here with a Coors Light Cold Blast Sports Night update. The White Sox game against the Red Sox in Boston has been postponed today because of Hurricane Earl. Teams will play a split doubleheader tomorrow at Fenway Park with Game 2 seen here on Comcast Sportsnet at 6 o'clock. We'll have all the day's news on Sports Night at 6.30, but now let's go back to Len and Bob at Wrigley. Gail, yeah, thanks. Pretty good ball game today. 4-3, the Cubs have the lead. Randy Wells has had to battle today, had their rough first inning, and has worked around some issues since. Well, he's uh, pitched himself into and out of some trouble since that first inning, and the big home run by Soriano giving the Cubs the lead, and we know the Cubs record has been much better when they hit the ball out of the ballpark so hopefully a good sign knocked down by the shortstop Tejada as he gets Randy Wells he hit that ball very hard hit it hard unfortunately hit it right at the Mets shortstop he just chested up blocked it and Threw on in plenty of time. That ball kind of climbed up his wrist, ultimately hit him in the chest and dropped right down in front. Hard hit ball by Randy Wells. Ukadome, 0 for 2 as he takes a strike, hitting in the leadoff spot. Since August 3rd, hitting 4.06. With a 5.06 on base average. 
leading the majors. Gonna need another bucket of balls. This does not reflect on Josh Toley at all. He's doing everything he can back there behind the plate to catch these knuckle balls, but it just isn't easy. I mean, this give you nightmares the night before an R.A. Dickey start, knowing you're going to be back there battling that knuckler. It was up, but Fukudome pounded it on the ground. Back to the pitcher. Two away. Watch Comcast Sportsnet Cubs game replays on demand with Xfinity TV from Comcast. Don't miss the action. Call 1 800 Xfinity today. Castro one for two with a run. Big leadoff single. Start the Cubs four run fourth. Robert Allen Dickey from Nashville Tennessee base hit center field Castro keeps on hitting well, I'll tell you for a 20 year old Len he's got such a great approach at the plate not only against the knuckleballer today but against everybody he faces he thinks Gap to gap. Hit the ball from right center to left center. A lot of his base hits have been just like the one we saw right there. A little humpback line drives into center field or over the head of the second baseman. Really stays on the ball a long time. That was called a strike. Totally didn't even catch it. At the end of the day, Josh Tolley's hand is going to be bruised because rarely do you square up that knuckleball in the pocket of the glove. We've seen a number of them hit him down near the heel of the glove, up near the fingertips, all over that big catcher's mitt. said earlier I, I never had the fortune or misfortune of catching a knuckleball pitcher. I would have tried two mitts one on each hand. I don't think they would allow that. <laughs> That's caught by Carter to end the inning off to the sixth. Nice day to kick off this Labor Day weekend. Cubs four Mets three. Love lost. A celebration with friends. If you drink and drive, not only can you lose your freedom, but you may be stealing someone else's future. The effects of drunk driving are devastating for everyone. Don't drink and drive. That guy's really staring over here. Must have sold him some carpeting or something. Mike, check out his bacon neck. Bacon? Sir, lean forward and show Michael Jordan your collar. Oh, see how it's all curled up like bacon in a pan? See how bad this dude looks? What's that? Thank you. Okay. Not us, though, buddy. I lay flats. We're like twins. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. No, we're not. Yeah, 
the Lay Flat Collar. Lays flat, won't bacon. Only from Haynes. Tuesday, Tyler Coven and the Cubs hope to give Houston a problem as they battle the Astros at the friendly confines. Coverage begins at 6.30 with GMC Sportsnet. Cubs, Astros, Tuesday night at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. Chicago sports fans know there's only one place to go for the best local sports news and highlights. That's Sports Night. Every night at 6 30, 10, 10 30, and midnight. Breaking news, highlights, and exclusive interviews with the athletes you care about. Tune into Sports Night every night at 6 30, 10, 10 30, and midnight, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. Cubs trying to improve to three and one on this long homestand. And even up this all time series going back to 1962 the Cubs are one game under 500 against the Mets franchise. This is uh, one of the things I don't like about the unbalanced schedule you take. For a long time had been a great NL East rivalry. You've turned it into a six or seven game season series. We haven't seen the Mets since April. And Chicago and New York, two cities match up. It's always fun. Two and two on Ruben Tejada. Dickey is on deck. Swing and a miss, strike three. That breaks the string of back to back leadoff walks to start the last two innings. Much nicer to start it with a strikeout for a quick first out. Almost cool enough. R.A. Dickey could have worn a Dickey today. Fake turtleneck. You got a few of those in your closet, don't you? No, I wore mine so often I, I wore them out. Caught by Ramirez. Dickey bidding for a base hit. The high fastball. Ramirez playing back. Just enough ups to make the catch right there. She wishes she had a dicky to put on right now to keep that wind from blowing down her neck. You should have a they should have a competition to see who could wear one the longest. You could call it a dicky thon. Oh my. Got to bring it all back to baseball. Now we probably should explain that Dickey Thon was a fine young player for the Houston Astros back in the day. Career really derailed. Got hit in the face, right, by yeah. a pitch. It was Mike, Mike Torres. Torres. Yeah. yeah. That was a bad one. Two and one to Pagan. That one pulled to right out of play. Happy 60th birthday wishes to Marcy Saracci. 
cheering on the Cubs today as Randy Wells has hit the 100 pitch mark. Bounced up the middle. Angel Pagan. Three for four. We were fans of Angel when he was here. There's no question uh, he had a lot of raw talent. I think there were some questions about the instincts at times. But Bob talking to the Mets broadcasters, they say he has been a much improved player in that regard this season, making good decisions on the baseball field. Yeah, a lot of injury problems as well uh, in his time here with the Cubs, but there was no doubting the ability. It was there. It was just a matter of bringing it to the ballpark on a daily basis, and he's done that this year for the Mets. Well, Angel had quite a game earlier this season. At Washington on May 19th, and inside the park home run, we know about his blazing speed. He's cruising around the bases for a home run, and then later would start a triple play. It's quite a day. First player since Ted Kazansky of the Phillies in 1955 to accomplish both in the same game. The Mets lost, by the way, 5-3. It's a strike on Duda. Here's a triple play. Same night in Washington. And look who was on the mound. R.A. Dickey. Shoestring catch. It still turned into a triple play. Right field corner and a lot of trouble. Pagan coming around. Relay throw is not going to be made as DeWitt couldn't handle it. He would not have had a play on Pagan either way. And it's a game tying RBI double for Lucas Duda. That is his first major league hit as the Mets are asking for the ball. And his first RBI. Well, Mike Quaddy out to the mound to have a meeting with Randy Wells. Could have gone to the left hander James Russell to face Duda. Elected to stay with his starter and Randy Wells made a mistake on that inside part of the pitch due to hit that ball really hard down into the right field corner and I agree no chance even if DeWitt fields that throw cleanly. So the best scenario for Wells would be a no decision and a Cubs win as James Russell will come in and try to strand that go ahead run at second base the Lexus call to the pen a 4 4 tie in the sixth. It's me, the lime. Welcome to the Taco Bell Cantina Taco. Marinated steak, cilantro, and me, your host to a new taco experience. And that deserves respect. The whole new taco awaits from Taco Bell. Down with 0% APR and rebates up to $4,000 in the Mitsubishi of your choice. That's why saving automatically is a great first step, Tom. Yeah, I'll be saving money without even thinking about it. And you'll be surprised at how fast those automatic transfers will add up. Oh. <laughs> and that's just in the first year. That's strange. I mean, I know I'm just getting started, but I already feel like I'm in a better place. It's great. Put yourself in a better place today. Come into Harris and see how five helpful steps, like saving automatically, can help make money make sense. It's me, the lime. Welcome to the Taco Bell Cantina Taco. Marinated steak, cilantro, and me, your host to a new taco experience. And that deserves respect. The whole new taco awaits from Taco Bell. Rookie left-hander James Russell. It's his 47th appearance as he faces Carlos Beltran, who's going to bat 
for Chris Carter. Been a real struggle for Beltran from the left side in particular. Coming off right knee surgery in January. Here's the pitch. Bouncer foul. Now, Carlos Beltran can occasionally play some very uninspired baseball during the regular season, but when the lights shine the brightest, he has been a serious money hitter. In two division series, a 387 lifetime batting average with four homers. In the league championship series, two different times, 353 with seven homers. In all star games, a 417 hitter, and in the World Baseball Classic, a 350 hitter. He missed the entire first half. And the 0-2 pitch bounces way in front of home plate. Right knee cost him a month and a half, or actually two and a half months last year. And a one two on the way, that one also in the dirt. Giovanni Soto and Carlos Beltran are from Puerto Rico. They both have been the rookie of the year for Soto in 08 in the NL and for Beltran in 1999 in the American League with Kansas City. No foul. Look out, Chip Hale. Three and two. Fly ball to left. Soriano's back on it now, camping underneath. To end the inning, Lucas Duda with his first major league hit, a game tying RBI double, and it's 4 4 midway in the sixth. This is the jungle, disguised as a wedding, but a jungle nonetheless. And here there are two types of tigers one that goes straight to the prey. And the one who makes the prey surrender to him. Tomorrow, Comcast Sportsnet is your college football kickoff headquarters. At 11.30, Illinois and Mizzou square off with bragging rights on the line. And at 6.30 on CSM Plus, Northwestern takes on Vanderbilt. It's a Big Ten doubleheader beginning tomorrow at 11.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. New inventory. New equipment. New trucks. New hires. New space. New markets. Achievement seizes new opportunity. Go to pnc.com slash business loans to see how we can help your cash flow situation. PNC, for the achiever in us all. It directs itself. Right turn ahead. Quiets itself. And outdoes itself. It's a Consumer's Digest Best Buy and the world's finest luxury crossover, the 2010 Buick Enclave. It's the Buick Summer Event. Get the best of the remaining 2010s and lease an Enclave for just $3.99 per month. Or get an Enclave with 1.9% APR for 60 months. Visit BuickDrive.com. Sports writers on TV, beginning September 10th at 11 on Comcast Sportsnet. Bottom of the sixth and a 4-4 tie. 
Ramirez taps it foul on a check swing. Somewhere there is Angel Pagan. You can see his right arm. He's in right, and Beltran now playing center. Well, you might be able to make the claim at this point that Pagan, with his speed, is a better center fielder than Beltran dealing with those knee issues. Beltran is a three time gold glover, two and one to Aramis. Dickey from the far first base side of the rubber. It was tantalizing, but Ramirez took it low and outside. No walks to this point for Dickey. And he Acosta up in the Met bullpen. There's ball four. You see the Cubs offense turn the tables as they pick up a leadoff walk. Watch the Cubs take on the Astros next Wednesday at Wrigley Field. Game time is 7.05, but be sure to arrive early. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Cubs toiletry bag, compliments of Vegas. Baby. <laughs> it's Andrew Nady with a base hit in the right, his second hit of the day. Two on, nobody out. Trying to get the lead right back. We're going to see the pitching coach Dan Worthen come out. And we'll look at that opposite field single. Shout out to Uncle Eugene, a lifelong Cub fan, 97 years old. His nieces Diane and Roseanne are here as he watches from Pacific Beach, Washington. Sounds like a place we need to visit, Pacific Beach. Oh, yeah. yeah, sounds good. Four four tie but the Cubs have two on and Soto takes it inside that's thinking uh, Soto might bunt and Davis the first baseman in on the grass right was in a little bit as well right backing up inside two and oh. Here's the pitch. It's a strike. Maybe for the first time in the ball game, back to back fastballs there, two zero. -oh. Geo took it for a called strike and then came right back with another fastball, two and one, resulting in a foul ball to the left side. Probably go right back to the knuckler again. And he gets him. <laughs> Only his third strikeout. Did go to the knuckleball. Boy, that thing just bottomed out. Looked like a middle of the thigh strike as it got about three quarters of the way to home plate, and then the bottom fell out. They could read the commissioner's signature on that replay as it was headed toward the plate. Here's Soriano hit a three-run homer his last time. Big swing. Ball on the inside part of the plate, down a little bit, right where he likes it. No doubt about that drive. 
Because he would kind of go against the grain in terms of the general knuckleball philosophy. As well, you let it go, but that's where Soriano likes it. 0 oh, 2. Beltron moving over into left center. The two outs. It's up to Blake DeWitt. For ball one. Deep drive to right. Pagan going back on it. The wind's going to carry it out. A three run homer. That's where you want to hit him today. It's seven to four. Like a fairly routine fly ball off the bat, but in this wind, a long home run. Well, that wind gailing out to right field the way it is, even a routine fly ball to right field today has a chance to get out of here. This one gets way back into the bleachers in right. Blake DeWitt with his second hit of the ball game. This one driving home three. Cubs with two three run homers in this game. And James Russell's going to take the at bat. Russell, the beneficiary of that home run, he has a chance now for the win. And if he gets it, it would be the first of his career. Thomas Diamond got his first major league win on Wednesday. Bounced to the third baseman right who slings it across. That's the inning, but Blake DeWitt gives the Cubs another lead. This time a three-run advantage with a three-run homer. It's 7-4. Place that you can find Southwest Fairs on the internet is Southwest.com. We're not on Travelocity. The only place. What's the other one? We're not on Expedia. But I'm on Orbit. No! Southwest isn't on Orbit. The only place. Let me make this clear. The only place online to get Southwest Fairs. Southwest.com. Southwest.com. Hello. We're only on one website. You want to fly all over. You don't want to browse all over. Brand new bag See Wrigley Field like you never have before. Take a 90-minute behind-the-scenes tour of this legendary ballpark. Now, Chicago Trolley offers convenient transportation to and from Wrigley Field. Purchase tickets by calling 1-800-THE-CUBS or by visiting Cubs.com. Square dancing to the BLT. The Subway $5 footlong BLT will line dance across your taste buds. Crispy bacon, lettuce, and tomato form a hoedown of taste. And swing that partner around to one of our many sauces. Crank up the flavor at Subway. I'm a teenage girl. My BFF Becky texts and says she's kissed Johnny. Well, that's a problem, because I like Johnny. Now, I'm emotionally compromised and whoopsies. I'm all OMG. Becky's not even hot. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem like me. Dollar for dollar, nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. 
Comcast Sportsnet is your college football kickoff headquarters. Tomorrow at 11.30, Illinois and Mizzou square off with bragging rights on the line. At 6.30 on CSN Plus, Northwestern takes on Vanderbilt. Don't miss a Big Ten doubleheader. Tomorrow on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Andrew Kashner will pitch the seventh. And he and the rest of the bullpen will try to save it for James Russell, who could get his first major league win. Here's David Wright. Two hits and three tries. He's knocked in two. 89 RBIs on the season and hits a foul. Ninety three XRT morning man Lynn Bramer our good friend will. Lead the fans in the singing of the seventh inning stretch coming up. Side on a fastball at 97, two and one. Cash near the Cubs' first round pick out of Texas Christian in 2008, the 19th pick in that draft. Cashner was drafted four different times, twice by the Cubs. And in three and two. That's okay. Well, the general consensus on David Wright is he's a better hitter with pitches middle of the plate away than he is middle of the plate in. That's thumped and it's going to get out in a big time hurry. A line shot homer into the bleachers in left center for his third RBI today, and it's seven to five. Boy, that was cranked. Those predictable counts, and at this stage of his career, three and two is a predictable count for Andrew Kasher. He's going to go to that mid to upper 90s fastball. About 90% of the time, he's going to rely on that heater when he's behind in the count or in a full count situation. That time, David Wright was all over. Ike Davis takes ball one. So Mets first home run today. They have not hit more than one in any of their last 31 games going in. They're still searching for that ball. This is their longest stretch without a multiple home run performance since 1992. So I guess if the trend holds up that's it for the Mets home runs today. Let's hope. Yeah. Four, just as Kashner was dealing, Fan was uh, throwing the ball back onto the field. Davis walks, and the tying run's going to come up. And here comes Larry Rothschild. Nobody up right now in the bullpen. Looking for a great venue for your next party? The Captain Morgan Club at Wrigley Field has over 8,000 square feet of indoor and outdoor space and unmatched access to Wrigley Field. It's Wrigleyville's premier party location. To book your party, call 
Arias in the action. As Arias will bat with one on, nobody out. David Wright, a leadoff homer. Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Called strike three. I'm on a slider. Back to back sliders. One for a swinging strike. This one for a called strike. Strike to Tolly. Punched foul into the upper deck, 0 and 2. up and rolling it foul the other way. Final Yankee Stadium the Yankees beat the Blue Jays 7-3. For their seventh straight win. They have a two game lead over Tampa Bay. A check down at third and Paul Nart said totally held up. Chopper and Kashner will tag Tolly. Davis now second base, two outs. We see a pinch hitter for Ruben Tejada. It's going to be Mike Hessman. Holy chopped that ball right off of home plate. When you see that kind of trampoline effect on a ground ball right in front of the plate, it usually means it hit the plate itself. The ball hits the dirt, it normally doesn't bounce that high in the air. Hessman for Tejada. Two for three is a two for 13 rather is a pinch hitter this season a pop up behind the plate. Soto didn't see it at first and it did land out of play by about two rows. Side one and one. Two big homers for the Cubs today. Both go ahead shots. Soriano three run homer in the fourth. Blake DeWitt went deep in the sixth. A three run homer. Sharply hit ground ball. It's Ramirez. Comes a stretch with Lynn Bramer. For taking me out to the ball game is morning DJ at WXRT, Lynn Bramer. All right, everybody, let me hear you. 
good and loud. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back for it. Root, root, root for the... If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's... You're out at the old ball game. Let's get some runs! No one looks at trucks the way GMC engineers do. That's why this year is engineered with variable valve timing, active fuel management, and a six-speed hydromatic transmission. It's the only truck that delivers over 300 horsepower and best-in-class fuel economy. When you never compromise, you have nothing to hide. At the GMC Summer Event, get the best of the remaining 2010s and get 0% APR for 72 months, or choose 5,000 cash back on most Sierras. Oh, do you guys like dumplings? Uh, I love dumplings. Yeah. <laughs> Working with a partner you can trust is always a good decision. Mass Mutual. Let our financial professionals help you reach your goals. A couple of changes for the Mets. Luis Hernandez is in to play short. And Manny Acosta will do the pitching. R.A. Dickey gave up seven runs. In his six innings of work, 29th appearance for Acosta. As we get into the bottom of the seventh, Lynn Bramer from XRT. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. With a fantastic rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. We know you've got good pipes because you're on the air for several hours every morning, Lynn. Uh, not but a lot you can of, sing. Not a lot of people have heard me sing in public. I think my last public singing performance was uh, the sixth grade play, <laughs> Captain Von Trapp. I was uh, a soprano still in sixth grade, so I think it was a little disconcerting to the crowd to have the Austrian <laughs> captain standing on stage singing in a high-pitched squeal. But uh, I tell you, I nailed Edelweiss. <laughs> Swing and a miss <laughs> as Fukudome strikes out. Uh, for the XRT listeners out there, and there are a lot of them, they'll know that uh, you and I have uh, done a little radio thing for a while, and I was on with you this morning, and. We kind of talked you through it, but in the end, I think it was all an act. I think you knew exactly what you were doing today. And I was I was strangely calm. Maybe the calm that Sean Penn had in that movie in Dead Man Walking, just before he's released from the prison cell. But I was calm. I felt good. Well, it's because I've run into you guys. We've done the Lennon Bob Bash together. I, I felt like I was among, you know, friends and family. Well, we appreciate all your support. In that regard, and uh, you are a huge baseball fan, and because of the hours you keep, you're able to come out here on a Friday for a 120 start and roam yes, around I the am. bleachers or the grandstand on occasion. Well, you know, I have uh, my friends out there in right center field. They're just to the right of the uh, the restaurant out there. Uh, some of the most dedicated bleacher fans in the game. Astro grounds out to right. Be nice to see the Cubs get one here today to go three and one on this home stand. Uh, they're hitting the ball. I'll tell you what, they're they're looking pretty good today. I, I don't think uh, Dickey's knuckler was knuckling. No, not the way he wanted it to knuckle. It knuckled right into some of the Cubs' bats today. We like that. There's something fascinating about uh, watching a knuckler throw the ball, isn't it fun? And now you were a catcher. What's the best way to catch a knuckleball pitcher? Well, I'll steal the line from Bob Euchre. You wait till it stops rolling, go back to the backstop and pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> and you notice Tolley has a different mitt now that a non knuckleball That's right. is on the mound. He has the normal catcher's mitt. Those knuckleball mitts look like first baseman's gloves. They're huge. There's the 1 0 to Bird. And that is a called strike. Lynn, I'm amazed at how often, and I know it's part of your job, how often you get out. 
to the late night rock shows and most good rock shows don't start at uh, 630 in the evening. It's my life's work. Right? And I don't know when you sleep but you pull it off somehow. Well as you guys there's a base hit left field. As you guys know it's uh, you know sleep is overrated. You, you've got to do what you've got to do. I mean I know you guys are in extra inning games. You've got to jump on a plane. You're flying to some other place in America. You're not getting any sleep either. Of course I'm at rock clubs enjoying myself. You're on a plane eating peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you are you going to write this restaurant guide to come up with post concert places to eat around the city. You know one of the, one of the things I have dedicated my life to is eating with gusto. And uh, very often if you're at a rock show it's kind of tweener dinner. I don't like to eat the early dinner. So I'm always looking for places to go late at night. Uh, you know after ball games you guys are probably looking for places to eat. Uh, you can't always get tacos at the all night taqueria. Sometimes you want something a little more or less substantial. Uh, so yeah I've dedicated myself to finding places to eat late at night and I, I as you can tell I've done pretty well. <laughs> well Bob will just go to the pizza section because that's all he does on the road. Really. Oh yeah. Kill pizza. That pizza. Yeah. Well you know in our family the Bramer family when we're on vacation we draw up an agenda and the first thing on the agenda pizza. Pizza. Number two more pizza more pizza. Number three go to the beach whatever number four more pizza. <laughs> There's a lot of pizza in our lives. Well, you're in a, you're in a great pizza town here in Chicago. Oh, yeah. We get spoiled here in Chicago, though, because not every city in the National League has the quality of pizza that we get here at home. Well, you, you cover a lot of ground, too. You have the stuffed pizza, the pan pizza. You have the thin crust, traditional Italian Chicago thin crust pizza, which compares favorably to the New York uh, wedge pizza. Sounds like a chapter from your new book. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, had, I had thought about writing a book. I wasn't sure it was going to be on restaurants. I thought it was going to be more uh, a biography that I could sell to a, a film company. The Life and Times of Lennon Bob. I think that could be big Ooh. money. For all of us, I'd cut you in. <laughs> Just missed on a slider to Ramirez. Well, you know my partner's a big music fan, and, uh, and so are you. You have given not only us, but uh, music listeners throughout the city great tips throughout the years. A lot of music that we haven't heard before. Uh, that's what XRT's been doing. XRT came on the air in 1972, and it's really one of the last stations on earth where there's a pop fly foul. Uh, one of the last stations on earth where you can hear something from the early days of rock and roll, and then you can hear LCD sound system or Arcade Fire, what they have just coming out. It's kind of an anachronism. Not a lot of stations still do that, old and new and, and middle range music. And if Eddie Vedder comes out with a Cubs song, you play that too. Oh, I really love that. It, it sounded like an Irish rebel song to me. Something you could swing your beer to. <laughs> and believe me, there have been plenty of times after a heartbreaker where I wanted to sing that at the top of my lungs with a pint. It's popped up by Ramirez out into center, and Carlos Beltran will make the catch. One of our best friends in the world, Lynn Bramer. Nicely Len, done. Thank you very much, Bob. Your always a pleasure. Regular Have a great song weekend. Bird. We'll see you soon. It's me, the lime. Welcome to the Taco Bell Cantina Taco. Marinated steak, cilantro, and me, your host to a new taco experience. And that deserves respect. The whole new taco awaits from Taco Bell. No oil has flowed into the Gulf for weeks, but it's just the beginning of our work. I'm Iris Cross. BP has taken full responsibility for the cleanup in the Gulf, and that includes keeping you informed. My job is to listen to the shrimpers and fishermen, hotel and restaurant workers, and find ways to help. That means working with communities. We have 19 centers in four states. We've made over 120,000 claims payments, more than $375 million. We've committed $20 billion to an independent claims fund to cover lost income until people impacted can get back to work. We'll keep looking for oil cleaning it up if we find it, and restoring the Gulf Coast. I was born in New Orleans. My family still lives here. BP is going to be here until the oil is gone, and the people and businesses are back to normal, until we make this right. If ever you're not satisfied with one of our tires, please feel free to bring it back. Thank you. Discount Tire Company.
Low prices, more choices. Discount Tire. Visit the official online shop of the Chicago Cubs at Cubs.com. Browse the largest selection of official gear, including the latest apparel, nostalgic memorabilia, and authentic classics for the whole family. Get your gear from the official source, the Cubs.com shop. Accept no substitutes. Get into the eighth. The plan would seem to be, we're not inside Mike Quaddy's mind, but Marshall in the eighth and Marmel in the ninth. Trying to close them out today. Luis Hernandez came into the game in the last half inning. Getting in that nine spot, he's a switch hitter. Now playing short. Topped off the plate, but a kick back foul. And again, we do uh, want to thank Lynn and everyone at XRT for all their support of our bash and Cubs charities. And they've been a wonderful partner. Oh, and two the count. Fly ball well hit left center and Luis Hernandez goes yard to make it a one run game. That is just his second major league home run. His first came back in 07 as a Baltimore Oriole. So he has had in his career 257 plate appearances and has hit two home runs. Well, and that's not the kind of swing that you normally expect to produce a home run. Choked up on the bat, just trying to make solid contact, and that he does, driving that ball about four rows up into the bleachers in left center. Well, that's a good lesson for all you young baseball players out there. You don't have to have a home run swing to hit the ball out of the park. Will not go down light. Nope. Pagan lifts to right, but they're going to get him for only the second time today. As Fukudome makes the catch. State good hands play of the ball game. Blake DeWitt going up the middle of the field with a backhanded stop and flip on to Starlin Castro. Glove to glove, nicely done. Inside corner strike on Duda. Well, that is only the third home run that Sean Marshall has surrendered this year in over 67 innings of work. Coming to a guy that you just don't expect to drive the ball out of the ballpark. And they're going to appeal. Yep, he's out. Mike Quaddy coming out, but I think the home plate umpire Brian Gorman saying he got a piece of the ball, but Soto caught it, so it makes it a foul tip. Nearly impossible for the home plate umpire to see if Gio caught this ball cleanly before it hit the dirt. Third base umpire has a much better look at it. We get a side angle shot here as Gio clearly gets his glove underneath that ball, keeps it out of the dirt. Foul tip strike three. Beltron. High chopper, Castro charging, and he gets him. A few years ago, Beltron beats that out, but not anymore with the knee issues. Boy, he really labored to get down that first baseline. Lead off homer by Hernandez makes it 7-6 in the eighth. 
Save big money on everyday products from Menards. Extra small fight spiral CFL bulbs have instant on technology and last up to 12,000 hours. A six pack of 13 watt or a four pack of 23 watt bulbs is just $7.99. Keep your everyday life going with batteries from Energizer. They provide long lasting dependable power. Right now, 10 packs of double or triple A's, four packs of C or D's, or two packs of nine volts are just $3.48 each after rebate. Save big money at Menards. Go with the brand that gets results with strong roots and strong stocks for performance you can take to the bin. Go with industry-leading DeKalb Genetics and proven Genuity Trait Technology, letting you get more from every acre. Go all season strong. Go with DeKalb. Dish Network claims they have the same TV as DirecTV. <laughs> Come on. When it comes to sports, it's not even close. Regardless of what they tell you, Dish Network refuses to carry MLB Network, Yes Network, MLB Extra Innings, and that's just baseball. So don't be fooled by Dish. Hands down, DirecTV has the most sports programming and exclusive packages you just can't get on cable or Dish Network. When you compare, DirecTV wins every time. Your guide to the high school gridiron tonight at 10.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Hi everyone, Gail Fisher with the Chevy Sports Night Update. The White Sox game in Boston has been postponed because of Hurricane Earl. The teams will play a split doubleheader tomorrow. Game one is at noon Chicago time with game two at 6 o'clock right here on Comcast Sportsnet. We'll have all the day's news tonight at 6.30 on Sports Night. But right now we send you... Strike one on Nady. Xavier's two for two with an RBI and two runs. The Cubs with a 7-6 lead in the bottom of the eighth. And the Acosta with a scoreless seventh gave up a hit in that inning. Swinging strike two. Up on a slider. Remember, coming up Tuesday night, 5:30 at Sheffield and Addison, Cubs will unveil a statue of Hall of Famer Billy Williams. It's before the uh, Astros and Cubs match up. Nady with hit number three today. Time now for the Mass Mutual in-game box score as you look at the Cubs line. Two more hits for Starlin Castro. Mady with his third hit, but the big blast today at the bottom, how about the seven and eight hitters, each with a three-run homer? Hiding in the weeds down there at the bottom of the order. Hey Bob, we had a nice group here uh, on Wednesday. Group of 58 Knights of Columbus members from uh, Granger, Indiana, were here, led by Joe Stakowitz. We uh, assume they had a great time watching the Cubs win the rubber game against the Pirates. Your thoughts yet on the uh, Nationals Marlins fracas the other night? That was a, a pretty good one. Major Morgan against pretty much the entire Marlins team. <laughs> He's had uh, quite a week. I didn't see the play at the plate when. Niger Morgan ran over the catcher and uh, it was a night before a night before. Yeah, it was I have a huge problem with it. But I think it knocked uh, I think it was Brett Hayes out for the rest of the season. 
And I think the Nationals understood he was going to get hit for that. And it should have been over. But then Morgan got on. Uh, the Nationals were down big, but I think it was only the fourth inning. He stole second, then stole third. The next time he came up, they threw behind him. And I think Jim Riggleman's point was, okay, we get the first one, but did you have to throw at him twice? This is where the unwritten rules get a little fuzzy. Oh. Speaking of up and in, does not appear to be intentional at all. Two and two. May not have been intentional, but that doesn't make it any less scary for Giovanni Soto. That was a chin ball right there, headed right for his face. And he turns out of the way, the way you're supposed to, away from the pitch from our Coors Light Robocam. That's a close shave right there. Morgan, by the way, handed an eight game suspension today for that brawl. Chris Volstead, the guy who threw that second pitch, got a six game suspension. Alex Sanabia, five. Gabby Sanchez, three. Edwin Rodriguez, the manager, one. Doug Slayton, a three game suspension for the Nationals. Jim Riggleman got two. Pat Listash got three. The third base coach who ended up in the middle of that pile. Lined and caught. And Nady was running on the play. And the throw to first is going to beat him for a double play. Lucas Duda catching that liner and doubling off Nady. So two outs. Sometimes this game just is not fair. Xavier Nady running on the pitch. Giovanni Soto could not have hit that ball any harder. Unfortunately, hit it right at the Mets left fielder. He makes a nice throw back to first to complete the double play. I mean, you really can't fault Xavier Nady on that ball. Hard hit ball into left field, sinking quickly. He was probably having thoughts about going to third base or maybe even scoring if that ball got underneath Duda, but it hung up just long enough for him to make the catch. Jerry Manuel is going to make a change with Alfonso Soriano coming up. Looks like Ryota Igarashi is coming in. Lexus call to the pen. We'll be back. Get up, get moving. Subway has breakfast. And it's a slam dunk. I like my breakfast sandwich with green peppers, onion, banana peppers, and mustard. I like eggs with black forest ham on wheat. With everything. I like a little kick. That's a good call. I like mine with egg whites. And? A napkin. Have you built your better breakfast? Now's the time. Try our better for you Western egg white muffin melt or the delicious double bacon, egg, and cheese on toasty flatbread. Subway, build your better breakfast. If you won't let me in, you can't really let me in. I don't know what you're talking about. You just tell me what happened. 35th in Archer. Next stop, Hamilton. Now you can watch hit TV shows on your iPhone when you get AT&T U-verse TV. AT&T. Rethink possible. Now at Menards, new DuraWeather Max Bond paint from Dutch Boy. For maximum performance and durability on the toughest jobs, pick Max Bond. It uses IPT adhesion technology to create a one step self priming formula that provides superior coverage on chalky, dirty, previously painted, or glossy surfaces. And it can even be applied in temperatures as low as 35 degrees. Right now, save $7 a gallon on new DuraWeather Max Bond from Dutch Boy, exclusively at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Sign up for a subscription to Vineline, the official monthly magazine of the Chicago Cubs. You see Marlon Bird on the current issue. Vineline offers exclusive insider coverage and photography all year long. Visit the Vineline blog at Cubs.com for extra content and order today. Right hander Ryota Igarashi, a strike on Alfonso Soriano. Sixth appearance is coming up from Triple A. It's inside. Chiba, Japan. And 
that's pulled foul. Two outs, nobody on here in the bottom of the eighth. DL time earlier this year for Igarashi with a strained left hamstring. Cubs got to knuckleballer R.A. Dickey today. He gave up a season high seven runs. And the Cubs lead by a run late. This when it happened, it grabbed all the headlines around baseball. The Mets closer, Francisco Rodriguez, out for the year with a torn right thumb ligament, allegedly suffered in that infamous scuffle in the family room at City Field as Soriano hooked that ball into the left field corner for a double. Number 35 on the year for Soriano. Be it for Igarashi. So with Blake DeWitt due up, it'll be Pedro Feliciano, a left hander. Lexus call to the pen. We're in the eighth. We'll be back. Online banking is going to be such a great step for you. Yeah, we'll know where every cent is going. That's right. You can review your account 24-7. And now that you've signed up for Harris Online Bill Pay, you can easily manage all your payments. So we can hold on to our money as long as possible. Exactly. So, do you? Yeah. I already feel like we're in a better place. Put yourself in a better place today. Come into Harris and see how five helpful steps, like keeping tabs online, can help make money make sense. the smartphone business meet fun fun business AT&T rethink possible you doing the Honda thing again yeah you can get 0.9% financing on any Accord or Civic okay that's all I've got to say that's right 0.9% financing for up to 60 months for qualified buyers on Accords and Civics it's 0.9% the 2010 Honda clearance it's the only thing from Honda that won't last <laughs> This offer is available through September 7th, so see your Honda dealer. A tander, Pedro Feliciano, always among the league leaders in appearances, led the majors in appearances in 2008, 2009, and he might do it again this season. He is currently, this is his 72nd of the year. But Bob has 71 appearances, 49 in the third innings. Left-handed specialist. Comes in to face that one lefty in the opposing lineup, or in this case, uh, Blake DeWitt down at the bottom of the order in a key situation of a ball game. Leg kick comes from the side, and DeWitt fouled it off himself. Blake DeWitt's three run homer, the go ahead shot. Trying to hang on. They'd love to grab at least another run here to give Carlos Marmol some extra cushion in the ninth. Lefty's hitting just 226 against Feliciano, and that'll go down after that at bat. Here comes the ninth, and here comes Carlos Marmol. Cubs seven, Mets six. Summer, it's here, but not forever. The Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. 
Don't wait to enjoy legendary Lexus quality at equally legendary prices. Lease the 2010 IS250 all-wheel drive for $349 a month for 36 months with $3489 due at signing. See your Lexus dealer. How about we open up a whole can of getting it done and get this year's colors up on the wall this year? Let's get better prices and better paint. Let's break out the drop cloths, rollers, brushes, and tape. Let's start small, then go big, no matter what the budget. And when we're done, let's take a bow. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Get $5 off one-gallon cans of Bear, Glidden, and new Martha Stewart Living Paint. New inventory. New equipment. New trucks. New hires. New space. New markets. Achievement seizes new opportunity. Go to pnc.com slash business loans to see how we can help your cash flow situation. PNC, for the achiever in us all. Replay returns with an all-new season. Gatorade reunites two Southside Chicago High School basketball teams. Bloom and Brother Rice, whose 2000 super sectional game ended in controversy. Don't miss the game broadcast premiere September 11th at 3 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet. Tyler Colvin comes in to play left for Alfonso Soriano. And the closer, Carlos Marmol is in the pitch 7-6 the Cubs with a lead David Wright will lead it off the last two innings starting with Wright in the seventh the Mets hit a leadoff home run slider strike David Wright 0 for 3 lifetime against Carlos Marmol with a couple of punch outs Talked about his base running, base stealing speed. You'd definitely like to keep this guy off the bases to start tonight. All right, really turned away from that slider, and that one came back over the heart of the plate. 0 oh, and 2. High fly ball into center. Wind starting to push it out, but Marlon Bird will make the catch right at the edge of the track. Oof. Had it all the way. Carried a lot further than it looked like it was going to when it initially came off the bat, but that wind continues to push everything to center and right field a lot deeper than it should be. Davis has singled, walked twice, and fly to left. Fifteen home runs tied for fourth among all rookies. Tyler Colvin leads the way with 19. Two and two. for Carlos to find the release point on that slider with a left handed hitter at the plate but once he does just pounds away at the strike zone Davis cannot pull the trigger on strike three Joaquin Arias no hits he did knock in a run in the first inning low and outside
It's low. Two and one. Henry Mejia and Carlos Zambrano tomorrow. That is a 12.05 first pitch. Schedule you have may say uh, three o'clock, but it's a, a noon start here at Wrigley Field. 12:05 in Game Two. The wind gusting right now out to right center. It's three and two. It's golfed up in the air as Fukudome doesn't know where it is. It's going to land foul, thankfully. Wind, sun, <laughs> just about every possible condition. And the ball wasn't really hit that high in the air for anybody to have time to get underneath it. Fukudome looked right up into the sun and lost it immediately. Blake DeWitt, really the closest Cub defender to that ball, and even he couldn't get there in time. Side ball four. Winning alive for Tolly. Here's a pitch. Slider missed. One and two. Tough take. Yeah, real tough take. Looked like a strike on the inside corner until that late movement. There's another one, almost an identical location. You know, of all the hitters in this Mets lineup, totally figures to be the kind of hitter that will give Marmel the most trouble because he's not trying to overpower the ball. Choked up and spread out in that batter's box. He's just trying to make contact. The left, Tyler Colvin makes the catch. Cubs win. 7 6 the final as James Russell gets his first major league victory. So in back to back games, two Cubs relievers getting their first ever win. It was Thomas Diamond on Wednesday, and today it's Russell. And the Cubs were able to get to the knuckleballer today, Bob. Yeah, really nice job. Good adjustments at the plate. And you have to make an adjustment before the game even starts against a knuckleball pitcher. And the Cubs did that today. Time for our GMC player of the game. The guy who had the game winning home run, Blake DeWitt. Pretty quiet start to the homestand. A nice defensive play. And the big three run homer to win it. Giving the Cubs some left handed punch down at the bottom of that batting order. He's come up with some big home runs already in his time here as a member of the Cubs.
So the Cubs win 7 6. Nice to see them win a one run decision as well. Now two and three in the season series against the Mets. And we have Blake DeWitt standing by on the field. Blake, how many times have you faced a knuckleballer in your career? Uh, not, too, not too many times. You know, it's. Uh... I faced him earlier in the year, and uh, you know it's always tough. Uh, if he's got a good knuckleball that day, sometimes it's you know it's tough to uh, develop approach against him. And uh, you know, just say to yourself, go out there and then try to have good, as good of a bat as you can. Yeah, we were just seeing a replay of your home run, Blake, deep into the bleachers in right field. Uh, uh, did Rudy Harmio have any advice for you guys facing the knuckleballer? We talked about some of the cliches you hear: see it high, let it fly; see it low, let it go. Anything like that? Uh, no doubt. You know, we talked about uh, seeing the ball up, and uh, you know, just keeping things simple. Uh, he's he's one of those guys you can't try to do too much against. Uh, you just get yourself in trouble when you do that. He's got a great knuckleball, and uh, you know, we kept battling there and scored some uh, big runs. Blake we've seen you a fair amount over the past few years but getting a chance to watch you play every day I think mm -hmm. I speak for my partner Bob Brindley uh, you bring a very consistent hard nosed approach to the ballpark every day is that how you look at it yeah you know you got to go out there and play hard every day uh, you know you ground a ball to second base you know you better be running down the line uh, you know that's how good teams win and uh, you know we're doing that lately and uh, you know, I think everybody's out there having fun and uh, you know we're enjoying ourselves right now we're trying to improve as much as we can and uh, just having fun. Yeah, you know, the big three run home run that you hit will get all the credit today, but you made a real nice defensive play up the middle of the field. That glove, glove flip to Castro. That was a big play at that point in the game. You know, I, I caught it and I, I knew I had time to uh, get it out of my glove. I kind of stumbled right there and uh, <laughs> lost my balance a little bit. So the only way I could get it out was uh, flip it with the glove. Uh, you know, normally that's not what you'd like to do, but in that case, you know, it was the only way I could get it there. Last thing, not that you're a grizzled veteran, but compared to Starlet Castro, you are. Uh, mm -hmm. He's 20 years old, and you guys are uh, working on your report together. I know it takes time, but it must be fun. It is. He's a, he's a fun player to watch. Uh, he's exciting. He does something every day that you know, kind of amazes you, amazes you, and you know, you got to step back and say, man, this guy's only 20 years old. Uh, you know, he's in there battling through each at bat, battling through, you know, uh, playing defense and uh, he's going to be a special player. Well, we've joked with you about where you grew up, but you're a cub now and no uh, it's great to have no you doubt. here, Blake. I'm glad to be here. Thank All right, you. Thanks. Nice job today. Thank That's you. Blake DeWitt who came up with the game winning home run as the Cubs beat the Mets. 7 6 the final. That's going to do it for our game coverage. Stay tuned for Sylvania post game live. Once again, the final, the Cubs 7, New York 6. Our next Cubs telecast on Comcast Sportsnet. It'll be Billy Williams night here at the ballpark. His statue will be unveiled before our 7 o'clock broadcast here from Wrigley. Game two against the Astros. In-game scoring provided by Scorepad. And now for Bob. For Bob Albrecht. Dave Turner, Doug Stanton, our entire crew. Len Casper saying so long from Wrigley. But we're going to send it over to Gail and Todd now in our downtown Comcast Sportsnet studios. Thanks, Len. Sylvania Cubs post game live is next. Todd Hollinsworth joins me to recap today's game. Plus, we'll bring you Mike Guadi's post game remarks and a look ahead to tomorrow afternoon's contest at Wrigley. It all comes your way after this short timeout. The only place that you can find Southwest fares on the internet is southwest.com. We're not on Travelocity. The only place. What's the other one? We're not on Expedia. What about Orbit? No! Southwest isn't on Orbit. The only place. Let me make this clear. The only place online to get Southwest fares. Southwest.com. Southwest.com. I know. We're only on one website. You want to fly all over. You don't want to browse all over. Now you can watch hit TV shows on your iPhone when you get AT&T U-verse TV. AT&T, rethink possible. The Chicago Cubs strongly encourage the use of public transportation. The CTA offers a variety of options, including the Red Line, which stops right at Wrigley Field at the Edison Station. 
If you must drive, try the remote parking operation at DeVry University, located near the Edison and Rockwell intersection. The remote lot offers parking and an express bus for just $6. For more details, call the CTA hotline at 773-836-7000 or visit Cubs.com. Coach Edwards, the Coors Light Silver Ticket promotion is back. How do you play? You play to win. Right, so you start with some cold Coors Light, then you... You play to win the game. Y yes, agreed. <laughs> we were just wondering, do you go online? Do you enter a code? Hello? You play to win the game. Look for the official entry code inside special packs of Coors Light for your chance to win NFL tickets. Do you ever play to lose the game? <laughs> get out. You get out. <laughs> Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Menards. At Menards, you'll find big lumber yards, big selection, and big savings. Chevy. Over 1,000 people a day are switching to Chevrolet. See why at Chevrolet.com. Midas. For brakes, oil changes, and tires. Trust the Midas touch. And by Toyota. There are many reasons to buy a Toyota. And now's the perfect time to get yours during Toyota's National Clearance Event. This is Sylvania Cubs Post Game Live. The left, Tyler Colvin makes the catch. Cubs win. 7 6 the final as James Russell gets his first Major League victory. And Carlos Marble picks up save number 26 on the years. The Cubs beat the Mets 7-6 to six is your final despite the swirling winds, low clouds, some cooler temps, an unusual weather day at Wrigley Field considering what we've had lately and a nice Cubs victory to go along with it. Hello and welcome to Savannah Cubs Post Game Live. Gail Fisher alongside Todd Hollinsworth. So uh, there was some tricky plays, some interesting balls flying <laughs> around Wrigley today, but the Cubs come out on top, a one-run victory. Well, it definitely had a September feel to it, especially early on. A lot of early swinging, a lot of getting after some uh, fastballs uh, for the Mets and, and for the Cubs try, trying to hit that knuckleball early but again they get six two out R RBIs today on two three run home runs the wind was blowing out get a little bit of help there nice job battling back today that's the one thing I, I, I seem to reference quite a bit uh, is when a team that's in this position down so many games in the standings and your season is looking for purpose when you kind of fall behind these are games there's can be hard to get back into Cubs did a real nice job today getting themselves back into this game not only that winning it and I think you could sense the frustration on R.A. Dickey's face when a few of his pitches, pitches you mentioned the knuckleballs, he thought usually would work for him, and he's been pitching very well lately. Weren't working in these weather conditions today. Let's go to that fourth inning. This is where the Cubs really kind of broke things open, scoring four runs in this fourth well, inning. Well, to me, it was about approach right here. These guys did a nice job. Castro does a nice job taking what he's giving him. He didn't overswing. He just looked to put the ball in play. Go the other way. You're going to watch Xavier Nady come up with a big base hit right here doing exactly the same thing. All of these guys are going the other way. They're not trying to do too much with the knuckleballer, and that's a great approach. When the knuckleball's up, it typically it can stay up, and if it does come back down, it's going to come back down into the strike zone a little bit more, but when it's down low, a lot of times it finds itself in the dirt. You see uh, Alfonso Soriano right there jumping on a first pitch knuckleball. He's able to deposit it into the seats, but it was just a really good approach by the Cubs today, regardless of the circumstances. They fell down early again. Uh, they've had trouble to get themselves back in the game sometimes, but you had the knuckleballer out there today. Mm -hmm. So it was just a matter of having a good approach. You knew that you were going to get some strikes, and when he was struggling getting his knuckleball down, the ones that are up, they can be easy to hit. They're actually slower than BP fastballs. All right, home run number 22 for Alfonso Soriano coming on two outs, a three-run bomb, and then... Uh, We've got another home run for the Cubs later in the game as we take, oh, excuse me, Mike Quaddy is now approaching the podium. Let's listen in to the Cubs skipper. They did. They did. I mean, uh, you know, Wellesley was not as sharp, obviously, as he was his last time. I mean, anybody that knows the game, but he, he battled and got through it. Um, somehow got, I mean, the, the big home run from Soriano. I mean, I, you guys watched the game. So, yeah, they hung in there. We made some defensive plays. Uh, and got some big hits, and, and uh, it's always you know it's great to come from behind. I mean, it, 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 you'd like to never have to do that, but it is good when the club hangs in there. And 
and, uh, and keeps working. And they did. They did well. Have you seen enough of DeWitt to know what kind of a player he might be able to be for you guys? I mean, again, I just, I, I mean, you know, I think see, I saw him in the minor leagues. You know, and you're looking at a guy that I thought projected out, you know, 15-ish, maybe a few more homers. I mean, he's still learning and, and uh, swings the bat well and still has, you know, I still will think we'll make more consistent contact and be able to drive the ball as he gets older. And he's, he's um, I, I would call him, I, I hope he doesn't take it. He's a blue-collar guy, you know, so you love him. He's a baseball player. And, uh, you know, you've seen him. He leads off, he hits eighth, he hits seventh. Never up. He's just happy to see his name. I mean, he's just so... If you've got a building, you've got that kind of intangible in your nature. It's it's a really good thing. So, um, heck, I sent him when I was coaching third. I sent him somewhere with the pitcher on deck in a, in a not a fun situation, and I really thought he should have slid. Well, he was going after the catcher. He was going, you know. I was like, okay. So and then you know what you got. Um, but so far, so good. When you uh, when you look at Wells and he was trying to evaluate him as part of the mix for next year. What do you think uh, he needs to do to be more consistent? Well, I mean, I mean, probably just that. I mean, it's just about his stuff is, is what it is. Can he improve his slider a little bit? Can he be more effective with his changeup? And to that end, locate his fastball. All those things improve because he's, he's got decent enough stuff, and then it becomes, a, to me, a command issue and consistency with that. Um, you know, he works hard at it. You know, it, that second year, I mean, he had, he had, you know, he had such a good year last year, but, um, you know, that sophomore jinx or whatever they talk about where guys struggle a little bit in the second year, that's, that's not a, a jinx. I mean, there's reasons for that. And, uh, and I think that, that uh, he's shown, to use somebody else's word, resiliency this year, gotten through some tough outings, and then he's had his very good outings. I mean, I felt so bad for him last year because he pitched so well coming out of the shoot, we never got him any runs. But... Um, he just said, you know, he's, it's a command thing with him, and, and he's just got to keep doing that. He's a big old guy, a big horse, and he's going to, you know, you got to remember, he was a converted catcher and all the rest of it, and he's still learning, and, and I think that improvement in some of those areas will help him for sure. When you went to the mound and talked to him after uh, the down, was it just kind of... Mine a little time for my left-hander. Jerry had options, you know. Those, it's one thing about, you know, the, the Mets have a bunch of people in here that, you know, with Beltran on the bench and Reyes on the bench, and... You know, you get reports, and is he going to pinch it? Is he not? And he did pull the trigger on the third guy, and uh, you know, it was time to make a decision. The next two hitters, I thought we'd give we'd give Wellesley that last hitter. Uh, he had gotten him out, and, and uh, uh, but I wanted just to settle him down, you know, and and also buy some time for the left hander if needed. Hoping, hoping I wasn't going to need him. Russell uh, picked up a win. First win, yeah. It's always a good thing. Uh, there's been a few of those this week, I think. We really had a few firsts, so. Um, Anyway, but yeah, that's a good thing. And he's, he's done a nice job, and again, in a lot of different roles. You know, come get one hitter for us. We need an inning and change, uh, all that stuff. So um, he's, it's good for him. It's good for him. It better, it better, not be, better not be his last. Between Russell and Cash and how have you kind of gotten about creating you know, some confidence out there? Oh, man. You know, Larry and Lester do a good job talking to those guys. Um, you know, I do what I do as far as, and I, I, it's, it's so bad to say, but I mean, I, I, you talk to guys, you bounce around, you, you use them, you try and stay positive, all that stuff. Uh, but ultimately, they've got to make pitches. Um, they've got to get comfortable in, in their roles and, and, and in their development here. And um, Lester and Larry are their mentors, and I think they've done a great job. And, and, you know, you give the kids credit first because it doesn't matter how good a coach we are, they got to get it done. And, 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 and they're getting better, and they're getting better. Are you saving uh, your pinch hitters when you send Russell up there? Yeah, I just thought at that point, and it's funny because that, you know, you talk about getting back into doing this, and, you know, I'm thinking, okay, if we double, we'll go with half power. I mean, you've, every scenario, and I didn't, the home run, I'm Russell sitting right there, and we had him sitting there, and I, you know, I was like, the last scenario I had was a homer, and there it was, and I was like, well, wow, why am I, why do I want to waste anybody now? And you can add on with two outs for sure, but uh, I just thought that that made more sense at the time. All right, Mike Waddy going over some of the particulars of the game. Before we went out to the podium, I was going to go back to that Blake DeWitt home run that broke up the tie, three-run bomb in the sixth inning. And Quaddy Todd talked a little bit about Blake DeWitt. This guy's so young, he's going to be a piece of this future for the Cubs. Well, he becomes a veteran standing next to Starlin Castro every day. But, <laughs> you know, the one thing I really uh, impressed me when I listened to Mike Quaddy and he's talking about uh, what Blake DeWitt might become. And you talk about the, the ability to maybe put the ball in play a little bit more. 
with some more home runs. You heard 10 to 15, maybe a few more than that. But I, I can tell you from experience, the one thing you really want from a young guy is to, to figure out how to be a good hitter. That's so important at a very young age and as he gets comfortable playing here in Chicago and wherever he ultimately ends up for the, the beginning part of his career, uh, it's so much more important to become a good hitter and let that power develop and, as opposed to try to expect it. I myself did something very, very similar in my first year. I came out, I, I understood I was just trying to survive the big leagues and do some good things. Ultimately, I tried to hit some home runs in my second and third year, and it actually ended up working against me. So I really like Blake's approach. He's doing a great job right now. All right, Randy Wells will have to take a no decision today. Here he is at Wrigley. You know, against the wall again, and I uh, just didn't come out of the shoot firing like uh, like I needed to. And you know, the team battled back and, and gave me a lead. And it uh, looked like I, you know, made some pitches to get out of that inning. Had a had a lefty up. I was starting to sink the ball away again, and just made a bad pitch in and and uh, left it up. And you know, big league hitter did what he uh, did what he's supposed to with it. Larry and uh, <coughs> Mike are very confident you feel that. Your development, even though you know you're a little more mature now, is still going on at this point. Do you, do you believe that's true as well? Yeah, I mean, it's no secret. You know, I talked to Larry today just after I was done. Just you know, he asked me if I was all right. I said, no, not really. You know, I just you know, you, you try so hard to figure this thing out. You know, it's you had you know so much success last year, and then you know this whole year's been a battle. And, uh, you know, you put yourself in the, in the mindset coming into the spring training that, you know, this sophomore jinx or whatever you guys call it is, isn't, uh, isn't real. You know, you can work through it. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, I think the biggest part of the, the sophomore jinx is, is mental. It's uh, learning how to work through the bad times, work through the, the struggles. Um, you know, like a game like today, you give up three in the first inning and then, you know, you gather yourself and you give your team a chance to come back. But then, you know, when you got two outs and, and uh, you know the tight run on, on on first or second, you gotta you gotta bear down, and I think that's where you know I've been lacking you know throughout the years, just you know putting the pedal to the metal, and, and when that inning's over, then then it's over. Not all right. You made a good pitch and, and got a you know big out right there, and then you know lax, and then all of a sudden you know a big hit comes along. So you know I got a lot of things to work on. You know it's no secret. Um, I think a lot of it is just you know staying positive and. And, and just knowing that and being confident in your ability and, and you know, it's no, you know, I'm a command guy and, uh, you know, to walk four guys, I think last game I walked three or four, you know, it's, you know, it's just not like me and, and uh, you know, it's frustrating. It really is. I mean, to be honest with you, it's just super frustrating and just got to keep working and, and, uh, and not let it, you know, dwell on you. You were trying to, as far back as the Cubs caravan, shoot down that whole sophomore jinx thing. And, and Mike said, well, there's no such thing. There's reasons. And I'm sure you found reasons for the ups and downs. Yeah, it's not It's not a matter of ability. It's not a matter of, you know, stuff. It's just a matter of learning how to deal with this league. And, you know, the reports get better. Uh, guys have seen you. And you got to be on top of your game every time. There's no, you know, okay, you're not sharp, uh, but, you know, hoping guys hit balls right at people. you got to be on your game. And, and uh you got to be on your game from the get-go, and you know you guys made uh, some comments earlier this year about you know the first inning jinx or whatever. But you know, it's, you make 35 starts, that's going to happen. You know, so that's I think that's the key is just keep making starts and, and keep getting better each time and out. And if you do have a setback, to to go to work and and uh, make sure that your next one is uh, is better. So I think that's the uh, the game plan for me right now. As much as the guys love playing for Lou, it seems like. Communication of these last 10 games have been, you know, good for all the guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's unfortunate that uh, Lou had to leave the way he did. Uh, he's a great manager, great guy. Um, but when a guy like Quaddy steps in, it's it's uh, a little more youthful, a little more uh, energetic. Uh, guys, you know, obviously are are responding well to him, so it's it's a good thing for him. Um, you know, he's been around. He's seen a lot of. We got a lot of young guys, so he's seen a lot of us and knows how to deal with a lot of us and. And he's just doing a downright, you know, good job. I mean, I guess that's the best way to say it. he's just doing a good job. 
All right, Randy Wells will take a no decision. James Russell actually gets the win for the Cubs. Dickey does have to take the loss as we take a look at their lines from today. And again, Todd, the biggest issue for Randy Wells is that first inning giving up three runs in the first. Well, for me, it's damage control, and it's the one area he's really struggled with this year. I talk about the moments, those moments in the game where you watch a, a guy like Ryan Dempster. He gets a few runners on. He slows the game down. He understands what he can go to, what's working for him. You look at Randy, I think at times he gets a little lost in those decision-making process uh, when he's out there on the mound, and you can sense those things. It's like you look at, at that first inning, and David Wright comes up. He's the one thump. He's the one big bat, the one proven hitter in that lineup. And, uh, you know, you, you're thinking first pitch, oh, I'm going to throw him a slider because I'm going to get him off my fastball or uh, get to him before he gets to me. And uh, essentially it's his worst slider. So, I mean, he's almost got to think it through another step. And he's right about a lot of the things he's saying. The challenge in your sophomore year is really It's another beautiful day here at Wrigley. Cooler temperatures, lots of sunshine, and Cubs runs. Giovanni Soto getting the scoring started off rookie right-hander Henry Mejia as he pulls a double into the left field corner. Xavier Nady coming around to score. Cubs lead 1-0. Nady's been in a good stretch because he's been playing a lot more regularly. Able to make good contact here. Fly ball to deep left. Sack fly. Marlon Bird is in. 2 nothing Cubs. The Mets would get a run in the fourth inning. Lucas Duda striking out as Carlos Beltran was headed towards second base. Starlin Castro unable to make the tag. Luis Castillo scores on the double steal. It's 2-1. Fifth inning Cubs get that run right back. Marlon Bird with a double to deep right field. Starlin Castro coming around. 3-1 Cubs. And they would kind of steal a run back. In the fifth inning, Tyler Colvin striking out, but reaching on a wild pitch by Mejia. Marlon Bird was at third, so he scores. It's 4-1. And on the mound, Carlos Zambrano continuing his very good stretch. Seven innings, just two runs on the day. He struck out eight and walked two and was really in command throughout. He did give up this home run, however, in the seventh inning to Ike Davis, the rookie first baseman with his first home run in over a month. That pulled the Mets to within four to two. But the one thing the Cubs have done lately is they have been able to tack on. And Aramis Ramirez got a pitch up. He took it out. That made it 5-2 in the seventh. The Mets would get their final run of the game. Carlos Beltran with an RBI double to deep center. Marlon Bird having a little trouble with that sun and wind. Beltran just getting it over his glove. Castillo scoring for the second time in the game. It's 5-3 at that point. But Carlos Marmel would come on and get the save. His 27th of the season. He gets Mike Hessman to end it. Cubs win 5-3 and Big Z 4-0 with an ERA that's under two since returning to the Cubs rotation. So the Cubs playing game 12 under Mike Quaddy. They have won eight of their first 11. As we go to break on the Hyundai leadoff man, let's check out our Hyundai dealer of the game, Gerald Hyundai in North Aurora, Illinois. See the cars the experts are raving about at MyHyundaiChicago.com. Hyundai leadoff man brought to you in part by Walgreens the pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs and by your Chicago Hyundai dealers see the cars the experts are raving about at my in the top 10 it'll be the first Cubs duo to do that in 20 years time now for Bob's Auto Zone tip of the day finish off the apple the Cubs trying to sweep the New York Mets for the first time in six years the tip of the day brought to you by Auto Zone for the auto parts accessories and advice you need get in the zone now your Hyundai dealers can show you exactly where the best offers are located. Destination Sassan as he honors the United States by performing the Star Spangled Banner.